you think you'll ever get your hair right? Yes. Hi there, guys. I'm Steffi Steph, and this is Bobby, and we're in the bustling city of Lima. That's right, Peru. Lima, Peru. We're right outside of Puku Puku Coffee and uh, this creperie called Beso de Primavera, or actually Beso Francis. I don't know. It's really good crepes and really good coffee. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about getting outside your comfort zone, and we're also talking about kind of enjoying uh, getting connected with different communities. Oh. Tell me about getting connected with different communities. What do you mean by that? So it's super cool. You know, one of the things I like to do is uh, I like languages and I, I get to practice Spanish in a You've way You've been that very helpful. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know about helping. Je suis parlé un petit peu de français, no Spanish. Actually, that would work here at this crepe No, oh, it would. <laughs> that actually is a French crepery. I guess I should have tried to order. Right, so for me, part of connecting with the community is meeting them where they're at. And for that, I try to speak Spanish because I really enjoy the language. And I also like, I, I don't mind if I sound silly. Uh, yeah. I just like to try to learn it. And I wanted to bring attention. One of the one of the uh, the books I'm reading now is called Rethink, and uh, by Adam Grant. Adam Grant and the coolest. We gotta do a book review on that. We will do a book. Is review this a on book that. review? That, no, no, this is not. This I'm is not a done pre. With it this is a one pre the, book. One of the things that this book is already starting to change my life is as a, a younger practitioner, I want to posture and I want to ha everyone to know that I know everything <laughs> and, and that's not you know that's not yes. exactly the way to go and so one of the ways this book has already impacted my life is framing not knowing everything in a way that yeah. is palatable to me and and more importantly in a way that I feel confident and even more secure now saying yeah. hey I don't know something that's a cool motorcycle one of the smartest people I know knows how little he knows there's a lot of uh, graphs and charts here that are in the book that are kind of funny. This and is sounding like a book review. It's not a book review. All right, but, it's not a book review. But as we kind of connect with the community here and, and just kind of, you know, weave our way into a Monday morning here in Lima, uh, you know, just having some coffee on the side of the street, you can hear how busy it is, bustling. It's we went, bustling. It's a bustling city. We went through city. the northern part, uh, more of the, the market, market part of the city earlier today, and just kind of getting an idea of how Peruvians cross the street, how they drive their vehicles. <laughs> they honk a lot of horns. Honking a lot of horns. You know, surprisingly, I also get a lot of Big Sur kind of California vibes. Yeah, uh, we are there. we are motorcyclists. Uh, I don't know if I'd like to motorcycle in Lima. Traffic. I don't know, uh, but, uh, but it's different from Colombia. Yeah. We try to stay away from traffic at times. We and, like more. And also, I had my question answered uh, about language here is not, you know, is Spanish versus uh, Portuguese in Brazil, mm. which is pretty interesting to me since the, the countries are so close. What do you plan to do today to absorb yourself in the culture? Uh, today, just have uh, more conversations. If I see a soccer ball, try to play mm. uh, as well. I saw some kiddos with soccer balls but yesterday, but I just I didn't join in because I didn't want to scare them. <laughs> So that's interesting because a lot of times we want to interact with people, but we hold back for a variety of different reasons. You know, we, with Between Two Teeth, we try to put a message out there of connection, which means you've actually got to connect with people. I think our next steps are trying to connect with people of the communities that we, inter you know, that we when we're on location, in. yes. Yeah. And I think, you know, we've had people reach out to us for a variety of different reasons. Um, mostly good, some bad, but we've had people reach out and say, hey, can you talk about this or can you talk about that? And that's actually been really super impactful. You know, for me, one of the things I'd like to do is is have enough Spanish to be able to say, ask a question for, uh, for people on the street and say, hey, uh, community, what does community mean to you? One thing I'd like to do is have a bite of this. This crepe right. is freaking awesome. It's my favorite crepe. I don't think you're supposed to eat on camera. Which is, oh, let's see, let's take a chomp. How is he doing? We're gonna have people who work at Food Network weigh in on this. Mm -hmm. How was it? You're gonna have to beat Guy Ferrari here. Damn! Ah! Or is that the rule of I was trying to think of how to say it in French. One of the things that I, I feel like is challenging for at least for for people for my family is that we never really kind of got out and connected with the community mm. and i think where you guys are in homebodies your, in your neighborhood even if you're an introverted person 
There's a benefit to getting out and knowing who's to your left and who's to your right. My parents did not travel much, and it's been a blessing for me to travel all over the world. But what they did do well, they actually had a strong sense of community in their local community. They used to go to the local coffee shop. There was a breakfast place called the Boot and Blade where everyone would get the daily news and oh, everyone awesome. knew everybody. So it was a strong sense of connection. From a longevity standpoint, all the data are showing that a lack of community, a lack of connection yeah. is, is more deleterious. That was a pretty big Look word yeah, for a Monday. Deleterious to your health, uh, very similar to smoking. And I think it's like 15 years is one of the studies that I saw that it was yeah. a negative impact. And if you're, on if, you're if you're watching this going, this guys, I, I hear you, but I just don't. And like walking up to a random stranger is not my cup of tea. It's a muscle, and you got to flex that muscle. It's okay to interact with another human. We're all here for each Stephanie other. Stephanie Ganter, 2023. We're all here for each other at the end of the day. What holds me back a lot is I don't want I don't want someone to think I'm annoying, and I don't want someone to think. X, you know, it, it really does change. I don't want I don't want to make them scared of me, or I don't want to um, bother them. It's all about how I think they are going to feel. At the root of it, I think most people on this earth want to help others. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, so that's just my push. That if it's a muscle, you got to flex it. Uh, try to. It's okay to empathize with someone if, if obviously someone's having a really bad day. Uh, maybe it's not the exact moment to be, you know, light and have brevity there, but at the same time, hey, maybe they, they need something. But interacting with someone very, in a moment or just very momentarily, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, we're here to help yeah. each other. Get out and connect with others. And we would love to hear your stories, your comments on how you connect. Let us know. Hit the subscribe. Yeah, if you guys. like what we're talking about, bye.